Are we live yet? Welcome to the subdomain sandwich takeover, guys. Wait, I'm supposed to be talking about Kali Linux today? Son of them. So are you still installing Kali Linux off an ISO file? Better yet, are you running it on a VM? I mean, does anyone use VMs anymore? No, there's a better, faster, smarter, stronger way to install Kali Linux and it doesn't require using Intel i9 processor either. I mean, I just bought this because I wanted to run Notepad quicker. I'm just kidding guys. I submerged it in 10 gallons of mineral oil. Link on that video is in the description below. But anyways, I'm getting off track. So as a hacker, you can now run Kali Linux using your own Pentium processor or whatever you're using at home. And you can scrap that ISO file and you can scrap that VM because most hackers don't even know how to spell the word VM. So let's jump into the 21st century guys and run Kali Linux as a Windows subsystem this week on the secret letters of a hacker. Cue the intro. All right guys, here we are on my shitty Windows desktop. And the first thing we need to do is come over here to the settings tab, come over down here to a boot, and you'll see your device specifications. As you can see, I'm running a shitty i9 processor with 32 gigabytes of shitty RAM and my Windows specifications. Ubuntu on top of Windows does not work on the 32-bit version of Windows 10 because it requires Hyper-V. So make sure you have the correct Windows version installed. And then after that, there's two ways to enable this. We can do it by going to PowerShell. And if we run PowerShell as administrator, we can enable the feature straight from PowerShell. Or we come down to the search bar and we can type in turn windows features on or off. It's gonna do the same thing and what we're looking for is to turn on Windows subsystem for Linux. And once you do that, it's going to require your computer to restart. And then once you restart, you'll be good to go. So I'm not gonna go ahead and run that because as you can see, it's already on. Once you're done with that, come over here to the Windows Store. Let's type in Kali. We'll come over here to Kali Linux app. And then you should have a get button instead of a launch button. Go ahead and press that. Let's just walk through it. Add or remove programs. Let's go ahead and uninstall this. All right, cool. Let's refresh this. Let's go back to Kali. And now we have an install button. So let's go ahead and click on install. As you can see, it's downloading now. All right, and then we can launch it. And here we go. Shows right up for us. Now we're going to need to add some Windows Defender exclusions before we do any updates to this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here it's asking me for a new username, secret. There we go. Now we're in Kali Linux. So before we do any updates, let's add this to our antivirus exclusions because we know things like Metasploit and other tools like Mimikatz will get flagged for Defender and we want to exclude those packages. So we'll open up our file explorer. We'll come over to users. 
the user we're logged in as. We're gonna come down to app data. We'll come over here to local and then we'll see packages and then bam, Kali Linux. So we're gonna exclude this in Defender. So let's go ahead and open up Defender and come down here to manage settings. Come over here to exclusions and you can see that I already have it here, but let's go ahead and remove that and add the folder location and we'll just paste it here. Bam. So now everything inside this folder will be excluded. So if you don't exclude that file path location, Defender will flag your installs when you're going to upgrade Kali Linux. As you can see, it flagged these, it flagged EaterCap, and it flagged uh, Impacket. So we wanna make sure we exclude it first, then we can come over here. Before I get ahead of myself is to pin this location to your quick access bar because you can drag and drop files from your Windows machine directly into your Kali Linux box. So you can just come over here, come over to your user, and here you have your bash profile. You can open that and you can just edit it right here from your Windows machine. So let's say for example, you come over here to Chaos, you're doing some bug bounty, and let's see, uh, Cisco updated two hours ago, 2000 new subdomains, and you wanna download it. We can take this Cisco file of all these subdomains right here. So we have these all these subdomains to do bug bounty and we can just drag it right into our home directory for Kali Linux. And if we do an LS, bam, you can see it's right there. You don't have to do any extra commands. You can work seamlessly between Kali and Windows, which is Awesome. So if I come over here, I have a hacking folder on my Windows machine and I can just simply drag whatever Python scripts or anything I want directly into my Kali machine with no problem. So make sure you guys pin your file location over to your quick access. So if you run into this problem and you can't change over to root because of the password, what we need to do is open up a command prompt as admin. So again, this is if you trying to change over to root and it doesn't let you, you're going to run, you're going to run this command for default root, close that. Open up Kali again, and here you are as root. Now as we're root, we're gonna type in password, root, new password, retype password. So what we did is we changed the root password, and now we can do an update and upgrade of Kali Linux. And now we're ready to install some tools. So let's install Metasploit. And here we go guys, we have a fresh install of Kali Linux on top of our Windows machine, now with Metasploit installed. So in my opinion, this is the best marriage between working off of your Windows machine and working off of your Kali machine. You can have the best of both worlds without having to run a virtual machine or having to run 
a completely separate system on a laptop or a desktop. So I hope you guys like this video. If you haven't subscribed, you're missing out on some epic hacking content. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Maybe we'll build this out some more, throw in some scripts, throw in some tools, and start doing bug bounty hunting right from this machine. Thank <laughs> you.